Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to take a few minutes and show you how to install and how to use PowerShell Copilot. Now, as you may have heard, Microsoft is creating AI-based Copilots for any number of its products. Having said that, however, PowerShell Copilot is not a Microsoft product. Instead, it's something open source that was developed by the community, and it's not something that Microsoft created. So you can acquire PowerShell Copilot from GitHub. Now, the good news is that you don't actually have to go out to GitHub and manually download it. You can do the download and installation directly through PowerShell, and it's super easy to do. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But before you go ahead and install PowerShell Copilot, there's one thing that you're going to need. What you're going to need is an API key from OpenAI. So if you go out to the OpenAI website and you log in, you'll be taken into your account. And from there, you can request an API key. Now, there is a small charge associated with using an API key, but assuming that you're just casually using PowerShell Copilot, those charges shouldn't be all that much. So, once you've got your API key, be sure and keep it safe. It's not the sort of thing that you want to disclose to anyone. Just make note of it, and you're going to need that in order to complete the installation process. So, let me go ahead and close out my browser. And I'm going to switch over to PowerShell. And you'll notice that I'm using an elevated PowerShell session. And I'm going to go ahead and install PowerShell Copilot. Now, the way that we do that is we install a module called PowerShell AI. And this module comes directly from OpenAI. So I'm going to type install module. PowerShell AI. Now, typically when you go to install this module, you're going to see a message like this one telling you that you're installing from an untrusted repository. If you get this message, just press Y for yes or A for all. Now, there is one other message that you might see here. If you've previously installed this module and there are remnants of it on your system, then you'll have to append the allow clobber parameter to the install module commandlet. And that will allow the install module commandlet to overwrite whatever is already on your system. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and press Y for yes. So the module's been installed, but before we can use the module, we have to provide the module with our API key. And the way that we do that is by typing set dash open AI key. And I'll press enter. And so now I'm prompted to enter my key. So typically what you would want to do, since the key is a great big long number, is just do a copy and paste. Because the key isn't the sort of thing that you want to disclose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video while I enter my key, I'll clear the screen, and then we'll pick it up here in just a moment. Okay, so now that Copilot has been installed, let's try using it. The way that you engage Copilot is simply by typing the word Copilot. From there, whatever you want to ask Copilot, just put it in quotation marks. So. I'm going to start out by saying hello. So I'll type quotation marks, hello, and quotation marks. And this doesn't really accomplish anything. This is just a way of verifying that Copilot is working and that it's installed correctly. So I'll go ahead and press enter. And you can see that Copilot is thinking. And so now we get something that comes back and says write output, hello. Now, what I want to show you right here is that typically Copilot is not simply going to provide you with a text-based answer the way that ChatGPT would. Instead, what it's going to give you is PowerShell code that will give you the answer that you're looking for. So here, Copilot isn't just saying hello back to you. Instead, it's actually giving you a PowerShell command, write output, hello. And then you have the option of either running the code, explaining the code, copying the code, or quitting. Incidentally, quitting is the default behavior, so if you just press enter, it will drop you back out to a command prompt. So let's try this again so we can explore some of the various options. So I'll repeat the command, copilot hello. And so this time I'm going to press Y to go ahead and run the code. And so the code executes and I get the word hello. Let's try it again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to press E for explain. And what I get is a summary that comes from the various resources that are available online, saying write output is a command led in PowerShell that's used to display output in the console. In this example, it will display the string hello in the console. So if you're not super familiar with PowerShell, this is a great way of learning. 
because you can have Copilot to generate code for you. And then Copilot can also explain what that code does and how it works. So that's a great way to become familiar with the PowerShell environment if you're not already. And then we also have a copy option, which you can use to copy a command out to the clipboard, and then you can paste it into another interface. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter to quit. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and try some other things with Copilot. Let's begin by asking Copilot some questions about our system. Because remember, PowerShell started out as a management interface that Microsoft created for Windows. So let's find out how Copilot works with regard to managing our system. So I'm going to ask Copilot how many files are in the current folder. So I'll type Copilot, because anytime we're engaging Copilot, we have to start with the word Copilot, and then quotation marks, show me how many files are in the current folder. And then quotation marks and enter. And once again, what I get is a PowerShell commandlet. So we have get child item, that's the PowerShell equivalent to the old DIR command that we have from the days of DOS. And then we have measure object. So measure object will show us the number of files that are returned by the get child item command. So I'll press Y to run it. And then we can see that this particular folder contains 4,415 files. So what else can we do with Copilot? How about checking how much disk space that we have left? Now, there are easy PowerShell commands to do this. I wouldn't normally have to use Copilot for that, but let's just see what Copilot does. So I'm going to type Copilot, and then how much disk space do I have left? And what's interesting is I'm able to put in a natural language query. I don't have to structure this in any specific way other than making sure that I use the word Copilot and making sure that I enclose my query in quotation marks. So I'll press enter. And again, I have a command that's returned. And in this case, we're using get WMI object. So Copilot is clearly capable of generating more advanced commands. I'll press Y to go ahead and run this. And here we can see the amount of free space that we have on each one of our disks, as well as the total disk size. Now, if you're wondering why we have to press Y in order to execute the command instead of just having the command executed automatically, it's a safety feature because remember, all of these commands are being generated by AI and you never know for sure what the AI engine is going to give you. So you have a chance to review the command before you actually execute it. So that way, if AI gives you something really off the wall, that has the potential to harm your data or harm your system, you have the chance to opt out of running that command rather than having that command executed automatically. Okay, so let's try some other things. Let's find out, am I logged in as an admin? And I haven't tried this ahead of time, so I'm not even sure what's going to happen here, but let's try it. So I'll type copilot, and then am I logged in as an admin? And I'll press enter. And so we have a couple of commands that are returned. I'm going to press Y to run them. And this time Copilot fails. So clearly Copilot isn't perfect. There are some problems that Copilot isn't capable of helping you with. But that doesn't mean we can't use Copilot for other things. So let's try a few other things. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. And I'll just use the CLS command for that. And the next command that I'm going to try is create a simple hello world app. So I'll type copilot and then create a simple hello world app and I'll press enter. And what copilot gives us is a simple write host statement. So we have a one line script. I'll go ahead and press yes to run it and copilot displays the words hello world. And you'll notice that it even appended an explanation point to Hello World, which I didn't ask for. So there is a bit of creativity here. So what else can we do? Well, what about making a graphical Hello World app? Um, I'll type Copilot. Actually, I'll just press up arrow to repeat the command. And I'll type graphical. So we have create a simple graphical Hello World app. And so Copilot's thinking, 
and we're actually given commands for a graphical app. So I'm going to go ahead and press Y to run this. And here we have the words Hello World inside of a Windows form. So PowerShell Copilot is indeed capable of generating GUI-based apps. Let me go ahead and close this out. And let's try one more thing that I'm a little bit curious about. Recently, for one of my articles, I created a calculator app that was entirely based on PowerShell. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to type cd backslash, and then I'll go to my scripts folder, and then I'll type dot slash calc dot, dot ps1, and you can see that we have the Posey Simple Calculator. So this is just a simple calculator app that was written entirely in PowerShell using forms, and it does work. We can type one, two, three, plus four, five, six, equals, and then we get an answer. And I'll press clear, and that will clear that out. So that's what my calculator app does. So let's see if Copilot can generate something similar to this, because I wrote this from scratch. I didn't use Copilot, but let's see what Copilot gives us. So I'll type Copilot, and then generate a script that acts as a calculator. And I forgot the quotation marks, so let's go back and add those in. And I'll press Enter. And you'll notice Copilot works even though I switched to a different folder. So we have a resulting script, and it looks like this time we're using read host to populate two variables, num1 and num2. And then we're using an operation plus minus multiply or divide, and we're combining all of that together to produce a result. So this is a really simple text-based calculator. Let's go ahead and run it. Enter the first number, we'll type one, two, three. Second number, I'll type four, five, six. And then an operation, I'll enter plus. And then we get a result. And interestingly, it looks like PowerShell Copilot got this wrong. Because take a look at the result. The result is one, two, three, four, five, six. So what really happened was the PowerShell combined two strings. It didn't actually add those two strings together. So this isn't truly a calculator. Instead, what we're doing is string concatenation. But let's ask for a graphical calculator and see if PowerShell Copilot can do any better. So I'm going to repeat my command from before, and I'll ask for a graphical script. And we get a little bit longer of a script this time. Let's go ahead and run it and the script fails. So again, we have an example of a situation where Copilot didn't quite get it right. But you've got to remember, Copilot is developed by the community, so it's, it's a helpful utility, but it's not something that's going to be officially supported by Microsoft or by OpenAI or anyone else. Even so, if you're stuck on creating something in PowerShell, oftentimes Copilot can at least get you a good starting point. It might not always give you exactly what it is that you're looking for, but in most instances, it will give you enough to at least get you started. And again, if it does give you something and you don't fully understand it, you can have Copilot explain that to you by using the explain option. So with that said, I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.